Hey there, Heather Boyd Wire here. And Today I'm making rings inspired by the yin yang earrings linked in the description. You are going to need 20 and 18 gauge wire, your tools. I have some four millimeter beads and my ring mandrel. I'm going to take a marker for the round form and just make a circle with the 20 gauge wire. So we're going to bring it around to make a full circle. And then we are going to get our pliers. I have some larger round pliers and I'm going to form the curves inside the circle. So we want these curves to be at equal size. You can also use the end of a pen if it's easier. We're just going to adjust them so they are the same size. It looks like an S. So from there, I'm getting my tweezer nose pliers. These are the Zuron tweezer nose pliers. They're really good for getting into small spaces. I'm going to hold the wires together and pull the end through the circle. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it's nice and tight. And we're just going to bring it all the way around one full turn. Wiggle it a little more to make it tighter. So then we're going to flip it over. You can pinch that in place a little bit. Do any little adjusting to make sure the S is centered. Keep going until they look even on both sides. And once you're happy with it, then you can go and twist the wire on the bottom. So just hold it gently with the end of the tweezer nose pliers and bring the wire around so it's going the same direction as the top wire. Curve it with your thumb. You could trim it. It's a little bit long. I always cut my wires a little too long and then pull that end, give it a little wiggle so it's nice and tight. So there we have our beginning point and we're going to put a four millimeter bead on there. You can definitely see the wires are long. You could have trimmed about an inch or two off. So now we're going to get a four millimeter pearl for the other bead. And we're just going to take our round nose pliers. These are the very fine round nose pliers. And we're going to bend the wire up because we want to suspend that bead in the middle of that little curve. So it helps to bend the wire first with the round nose pliers. You just help it out a little bit and then push the wire around the bead, making sure that they're nicely centered and then curve the wire around the bead. And we're going to get our flush cutters to trim it so it will just sit nice and flush around the bead and there won't be a little scratchy end there. So do the same on the other bead. Clip it with the flush cutters and then get the tweezer nose pliers to just get that end nicely tucked in. Just push it right in so it's not scratchy and then have a look and see if you need to make any adjustments. You can push the beads over a little bit to center them a little better. You can tighten up some of those winds so they don't slide and just keep adjusting until you're happy with it and it's nice and secure. Try not to pinch it too much that you snap the wire, but you do want it to be firmly in place. The artistic wire is quite resistant, so you shouldn't have a problem getting it just to hold in place. Keep adjusting it until they're nicely placed and centered. Take your time with the adjustments. There you have your finished yin yang. And now for the band, we're going to take 18 gauge wire and wind it around the ring mandrel about one size smaller than you like because it will bounce back a little bit. 
So then you remove it and we're going to bend one wire up and then we're going to see how wide that we need the space to be and we're going to bend the other side up and that's going to hold the middle piece in place. So that's our starting point. And then we can put it back on the mandrel and then put our little charm back on. We're going to center it, make sure it's vertical, hold it in place. It's a little tricky, it wiggles around a little bit, but don't worry, we're going to be able to adjust that at the end. And we're just going to push those wires to either side and that will hold in place. So now we want to take our pliers and just give that a good little tug so it's nice and secure and clip the wire with the flush cutters and push it in so it's not scratchy. Just bring it right in there, give it a good little pinch and we'll do the same on the other side. Just give it a little tug to close that loop. Clip it with the flush cutters and pinch in that little end. Now you'll see it's wiggling a bit, so center it and give it a good little pinch. You can put it back on the mandrel, adjust it so it's placed properly, and at that point give it a final pinch so it doesn't wiggle around. Again, don't pinch it too much that it breaks the wire, but you want to pinch it enough that it holds in place. So there you have your finished ring with some nice clean lines. So for the second style, I'm using a slightly longer wire and we're going to start by putting the beads on first. So we put a four millimeter black bead and we are going to just surround it with the wire. We want to go around the front and around the back to completely surround that bead with the 20 gauge wire. So we have our first bead and then I'm just going to curve it with the end of a Sharpie just so we can get it right in there and curve it around to start to do the outline of the yin yang. So just go slowly with it, curve it around, and then we're going to bend the wire at an angle and put the other bead on. So now we're going to surround that bead with the wire front and back so it's completely surrounded with the wire. Just bring it around, make sure it's positioned nicely. Do any little adjusting that you need. So we want one bead positioned above the other. And then we'll get the round form again and curve the wire around. So we're making a complete circle now. So basically it's a circle with the two beads in place. So that's our beginning point and just make sure it's even on both sides. And now I'm going to just take the wire and curve it around the black bead. So it makes the yin yang shape there. Just curve it right around, wiggle it around so it just fits between those other wires. And that's our beginning point for the ring. And now we're going to just finish it simply. We're going to bring the wires around to the back. Again, I've cut my wires too long. We're going to bend it at a right angle at the center back and then curve the other wire around. So we're basically just connecting those wires at the size that you want. So now we're going to clip it and we're going to pinch that so it's flush and not scratchy. Same on this side, we're just going to pull it around. So the wires are basically looped together, cut it flush, and then once it's cut flush, Give it a good little pinch. We're going to push that end down so it's not scratchy. Now you can tighten these ends up if you like. Put it back on the ring mandrel 
And now you can do any adjustments if you have to push those wires in a bit, you can. And just adjust it as you need on the mandrel. You could hammer the band a little bit too. And there you have your really lovely, not adjustable yin yang ring. So thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more wire art and jewelry making videos. And if you'd like to share photos of your wire art and jewelry, be sure to join the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out my work on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry. I also have a mailing list, so if you'd like to sign up below, I'll send you my Wire Art Essentials ebook. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you the next time.